Hello, hello. So we're back with another Universus news update. I know we've had a couple altered vids here in the past week, and thanks to anyone that's checked those out, but I figured I'd wait until today to do a news update because today is the Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament Enhanced video scheduled to come out. So jumping right in, uh, the main bits of information we got from that video are that the mechanics that are coming back from you know, the old pre-MHA era that are going to come come into this new standard. Uh, they're bringing back Desperation, they're bringing back check costs on abilities, and they're going to bring back cards that simply do not have blocks. Now, all of these have occasionally had their rules funkiness, so, so that's going to be a little bit for them to handle, especially with check costs, but overall, you know, Desperation can be pretty cool when it's handled well. Uh, check costs are, are pretty popular, and it's a, it's a nice way to balance some things and non-blocks you know they've been making some plus four blocks here and there and it's felt kind of silly right so they'll they might sprinkle some of those in now uh, if you're not familiar with those with, with what these are right what these mean if you haven't been following retro for instance a desperation means if you're at less than half health the card has a different difficulty usually a cheaper one uh, very often like one cheaper but you'll get some that are two cheaper anytime they do more than that it starts to get a little dicey right you start to get really punished for attacking and they don't Hopefully, you don't want to do that too much, right? Uh, you could also have a Desperation-gated ability. Uh, basically, something like Quick to Act would have the Desperation keyword on it. And then check costs, or there are going to be some abilities that say Enhance Check 5 colon, and that means you have to pass a 5 check to play the ability. That doesn't have progressive. You can commit things to pass the check, but you do, you know, if you check a 3, you're probably not going to get the effect. It's like the reverse of, you know, Shigaraki and Dobby and things like that. Non-blocks are non-blocks. If, if anything cares about a printed block modifier, non-blocks just say zero. Uh, same thing as, you know, a face-down card when they ask for printed difficulty or whatever. Uh, aside from that confirmation, we got to see a bunch of cards between the video itself and an article that went up on The Gamer. I think we pretty much know the entire back page now. We might be missing, like, one card. So that would be cards number 145 to 154 in the set that are just sort of sprinkling of, you know, different characters, maybe some characters that aren't, don't have kits in the set, maybe some that do. And then the, the game article had some of those as well. We, we still, of course, haven't seen five of the six secret rares. We might be missing one back page card, and I think all the kits are going to be revealed by content creators. There are going to be 16 content creator reveals over the next eight days, so it's going to be pretty busy. It's going to be two per day. I think most of them are going to be at like noon Eastern and three Eastern. I haven't exactly checked that. Obviously, I'm going to have one of these, uh, which is why I know the time. Mine is going to be on Friday at noon Eastern. Uh, is when I'm going to be showing off one of the kits from this Dark Tournament set. It's a pretty, pretty interesting one. Uh, nothing, nothing too super complicated, but kind of interesting to think about. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then I already mentioned the, the Gamer article that went up. These are the same people that got the alternate arts to show off from the Challenger decks. Uh, so continuing on with them, giving them... This went up like 15 minutes before their enhanced video. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but they, they get this like little bit of uh, early advance on their stuff. Uh, some odds and ends uh, before we get to the UGN stuff. Uh, we also, of course, had our usual design teaser ahead of this enhanced video, just kind of a bunch of teases about, oh, you'll see this keyword, this combination of keywords, you'll see that ability. Here's a few general things about the set. And one of the more notable things from that is that there's going to be a lot of seven hand size in this set, they're saying. So, you know, be interesting to see, almost like the opposite of Jet Burn, maybe, where instead of barely having any, any seven hander, it might be like half seven handers or something like that, or even more than that. Uh, but yeah, as always, I'll link to that in the description as well as the enhanced video on that gamer article and some more, any other relevant bits. Uh, also, you, people may have missed this, they may not be aware of this. Uh, this thing above me, you, you may not have seen. Uh, this is part of the new local prize support system that they're rolling out, I assume with February? Uh, I'm not really sure what the exact schedule for these are. They haven't formally announced anything about it. These kits just sort of showed up at stores all of a sudden. Maybe they're in some store communications or something. But in any event, the, the idea is instead of having plus ultra packs with 12 random mechanically unique cards, there's simply going to be there's going to be an alternate art promo for each month. Uh, so for this month, uh, whether it's January or February, I'm not sure, but it is 
an alternate art Fallen Angel's Revenge, which is the mechanics of that card are in the Challenger series decks. But if you like this this really cool alternate art, and it is pretty cool, and people say it looks really good in person too, uh, you just show up to your locals and you'll get one copy. So if you go to four locals in a month, you go basically every week, you'll get your playset. If you win your local, you'll get a victory version that has, you know, a gold gold on the bottom, gold text, uh, some, some gold letter, lettering here and there, that sort of stuff, gold outlines. Uh, people say that one looks pretty good. Obviously, you know, I've only heard about these, right? I've seen some pictures posted on Discord, so you'll know, take their word for it. I haven't seen one myself in person. But that's, that sounds like that's pretty much how they want to do local price support moving forward, is, is that I think, they think they've got their their pack contents good enough that they can, that people are just happy to get their participation packs plus these promos. They don't need to really force them with these randomized plus ultra packs. A, a lot of games do random packs of alt art promos, so that there's a little bit of, you know, you're not stuck if somebody just doesn't want that one per month or whatever, but this is good progress in that direction. We'll see if they move to something like packs of random alt arts in the future, um, but I'm sure they want to see how this goes first and, and get some feedback. Uh, last bit to talk about, they uh, did something unusual for UBS Games, is they, they recognized an issue in advance and got out in front of it and communicated about it, which uh, is not the most, it's very weird, it's not very common, we're not used to this from them. And, and the issue is there's a very minor, actually very minor collation issue with the Dark Tournament set. Uh, the printer got a little mixed up apparently with how to handle some of these retro reprint slots. And I guess there are some packs that have wound up having two characters and some packs that have wound up having two re two reprints. Uh, not not retro reprint. Retro re reprints are like the, the four cards you get, but uh, two reprint slots instead of when zero characters or two characters and zero reprints. This apparently affects a very small percentage of packs. Uh, obviously, can kind of mess with drafts, so they use this kind of as an excuse to also just put up a poll out there to ask what people thought about the draft format. Are there things that, you know, would they prefer it if you pick a character in advance, or do they like having to get characters out of the packs that they open? Uh, I have tried those rules locally, and it went okay. It was certain. I felt like it was certainly an improvement. Uh, the issue with draft the way that they've had it for the past two sets is that you really have to pick your character within three packs or else you're it's gonna be very hard for you to make a playable deck and there's a pretty decent chance at least in jet burn or undaunted raid that within those three packs you're just not going to find a character that is you'll be stuck in characters that really need their rare right or that really need a certain keyword that's not very present at common or, you know, something like that, where the character could be fine and constructed, but they're just not really draft viable. And you can open three of those for your first three packs, and then you're just out of the draft because of the RNG of your packs, just literally, right? And that's fine for, like, a local weekly or whatever, but it's not so great as a competitive major regional format. So they've been looking at alternatives. They've asked about the just bring a character in advance, and that way you are guaranteed to have a viable character. Uh, that works when the symbols line up. Right, the other thing is you, you could bring a character or open a character in your first three, but their symbols just aren't available, so it doesn't matter, is another thing that can happen to you. Uh, the other thing that seems to be winning the pull pipe, be a decent margin, is just to go back to the old system. You do your draft, you grab whatever character you want after. So as the draft goes, you can try to figure out what's open, what's available. If it's very clear that nobody wants Ryukyu cards, you can just start snapping those up and play Ryukyu, that sort of thing. So, you know... The poll is only on X, uh, which means you, do, you, know, you will have to make an X account to vote in the poll. I think it's closed now anyway, but I'll, I'll link the article and I think the poll in the description. And last but not least, uh, pretty cool. We've started to get some communication on what's going on with the UGN, which has been had all sorts of issues and errors and bugginess since it launched in December. I think early December, if I recall. And, and they've started putting out some regular updates of like, hey, we're launching these fixes and here's what we're working on and they've done two of these and there's a little bit more to it than this but just just to highlight uh a lo some long asked for stuff stores will be able to copy events so that they don't have to you know type in the details of their events every week they'll just be able to copy it edit the date that sort of thing and, and set it up makes life much easier for them they've added a new event type for these challenger series launch events that they're doing where you get to pick what character you're playing out of the new ones so that they can count your points and stuff for that. 
Uh, you're going to be able to edit the round count of an event or end it early in case the, you know, you get a 17 person local and the app's like, you're getting five rounds, but you only run your locals for three rounds because of time restraints or whatever. You can now do that without the app getting really mad. But you could also edit round results if something messes up and they've added some sort of notification system uh, that is just going to kind of be a way to feed information to players. I'm not quite sure what that's going to be doing specifically, but that's a thing that they've added. So it uh, might be something that they're looking to use pretty soon if they added it now, as opposed to waiting for whatever purpose it's serving. Uh, those do not have, I believe, a posted article or anything. I think it's just in the announcements in the Discord. You have to go look for that, but they are doing stuff with the UGN. They are fixing things. There's a list of other things they're working on coming up. Uh, I imagine creeping up at some point, they're going to have to fix all the weirdness with the points that people have been seeing, especially as they do this big point-based launch event. Um, I don't remember offhand what exactly they've said is coming down the line. But yeah, that's it for this news update. Uh, stay tuned for Friday. We're going to have the Dark Tournament reveal. Uh, I, these are going to be coming so fast that I, once again, I don't think I have any chance of doing some like look at the new cards videos. There's probably no hope of that because there's going to be 144 cards revealed over eight days. Uh, I might get onto my X account and and sort of uh, me and Patrick Toombs kind of did the same thing today where we sort of snap graded the, the cards that we saw from Enhanced. Uh, I think he's going to keep doing that on X and I might do it as well. Uh, not sure if I'm going to reply to the posts or just repost them, but if you're on X, uh, I guess I, I should link my account in the description somewhere. That's what people do, and you can follow that And if you're interested in my random snap takes that are just letter grades. But it's kind of fun, a fun exercise to do just to think about cards like that, so probably going to do that. And yeah, that's it for tonight. Uh, have a nice week, and see you next time.